There are plenty of reviews out there on the Toyota Innova Hi-Cross in its hybrid guise where it's shown its strong efficiency, plush interior and a good amount of features as well. But what about this one? What about the one that's not in the limelight? No fancy hybrid tech, no plush ottoman seats, no panoramic sunroof, no ventilated seats, no cruise control. No reason to buy? Well, let's find out. But before we get going, don't forget to subscribe to the Autocar India channel. And while you're there, hit the bell icon as well. Alright, so how do you tell a non-hybrid high cross from a hybrid high cross? Well, the first thing is bling, which on the non-hybrid is missing. You don't get any chrome bits on the grill. There's none of those silver accents on the bumper as well. And you don't even have fog lamps. It's a very basic front end. You get your LED headlamps. That's thankfully there. And that's pretty much it. So you don't have a lot in terms of that road presence, a lot of that bling and the wow factor that people want. And honestly, I think it's not too bad because I know a lot of guys who don't really like the chrome. They like this whole blacked out theme and that's good. But these plastic bits and you know, the overall basic feel is a bit awkward. So you will have to spruce that up a bit. If this was gloss, it would have been perfect. Now, if you won't have a problem with the front with its missing chrome, you are likely to have a problem with the side because of the wheels. Now, look at them, 16 inch wheels on a car this size. These are wheels you get on the Brezza, the Venue, you know, cars that are two segments below and it just looks ungainly, proper shopping cart wipes. So the first thing people are going to change before they take the plastics of the seats are the wheels. They have to be upgraded. Other stuff is again, like on the front, you get no chrome on here. So no chrome around the windows, no chrome for the door handles. And it is a very basic layout at that. But more importantly, it's the size that will impress people because that's what we love about the High Cross. It is absolutely humongous. And that means good space on the inside. And at the rear, things are not different. Again, no chrome on here, no reflector strip, no fancy silver garnishing, nothing. So it has a very simple look, LED tail lamps, and that's about it. So, you know, overall, if you want to spruce up your Innova, if you don't like this whole bare bones design, you can resort to this. This is the accessories list on the Innova High Cross. And well, there's a lot of stuff on here, but if you want the exterior to be jazzed up a bit, you can spend a little extra. And that means if you want the door handles in chrome, that's 3,584. If you want a hood emblem on the bonnet, which is gonna be 3,248, if you want that Innova lettering written in chrome. If you want tail lamp garnishing, that's gonna cost you 6,608 rupees. If you want the grill to have a bit of chrome, that's gonna cost you 3,248. If you want a rear reflector garnish, that's gonna cost you 3,248 again. So yeah, there are things you can do with this car. These of course are Toyota genuine accessories. Now the accessory market is absolutely incredible. You can go out of your way and find pretty much more than this stuff that's on here that will make the car better. A lot of guys have actually done that, bought base version Innovas and have spruced it up to their liking. So that is an option for not a lot extra. You don't have to spend a lot more. Now getting inside the Innova High Cross is an absolutely easy task. You just basically walk in, the seat height is just perfect. But once you're in here, especially on the non-hybrid version, it is like going back in time. The interior is far too dated. You just have black plastics. They are scratchy, hard plastics as well. Not good to the touch. And especially at this price point, it just feels low rent on the whole. The hybrid version gets this lovely dual tone layout, which has soft touch materials everywhere. You have leather at seats as well, a bit of leather on the steering, and that overall just uplifts the cabin. On this though, you really are treated like it is an absolute base model. And that with prices over 20 lakh just does not sit well. Other thing is the touchscreen. This is an eight inch unit and functionality and the overall feel and look of it is just very, very old and dated. You do not expect this in a car at this price point. Again, these buttons, all these knobs manually controlled feel really flimsy and old school. I know it's just not a nice feeling. What is good though is the amount of space on offer. You know, that is something that the High Cross absolutely aces. Even at the front, you have an incredible amount of room for the driver and the passengers. The seats are very, very comfortable. Just the right amount of cushioning. They are broad as well. And you know, you just feel very, very nice sitting in. Now, the driving position is also very good. You can adjust the seat for height, of course. Go really low down if you want. Raise it up. The steering adjusts for rake as well as reach. 
So that's a good touch as well. And the overall visibility is quite good. You have these quarter glass panels that, you know, give you good visibility out. The ORVMs are just the right size. So yeah, in terms of those fronts, it is quite a nice car. But again, you know, you just don't feel like you're sitting in a 20 lakh car, especially in the front seat. There aren't many features to boast in this GX, guys. The instrument cluster is analog, the rear view dimmer is manual, there is no sunroof and neither is there cruise control. So not a lot to play with if you are the sorts that likes to be in the driver's seat. However, swap places with the middle row and things get a lot better. Now this is where you have absolutely no room to complain, but you have a lot of room because just look at the amount of leg room I have. This seat is set in my driving position and I like to sit a bit relaxed anyway and I'm over six feet. So, you know, I've never had this much room with my driving position in a car, but if you want to further elevate it, all you need to do, and now this is absolutely ridiculous. Just the amount of space I have is really funny. And for more comfort, you can obviously recline the backrest and well, that makes it the perfect spot for a snooze. And this is where a lot of the owners are likely to be because if you don't really care about driving, if you're not into the hybrid tech, if you don't care about the touchscreen and the fiddly controls up front, back seat is where you primarily travel, then this works absolutely fine. You get your own AC vents, of course. Again, these switches are fiddly. They're not the best, but they'll do the job just fine. You also have two type C ports back here. And what is missing are sun blinds. Even manual sun blinds would have been perfect because these are large windows. You have a lot of light coming in. Heat is really, really harsh here. So yeah, manual sun blinds would have been a very good addition because this is not really the base, base version. You know, it's a GX, it's a bit above the base. So these small things would have made a big difference. Now, the other great bit on the high cross, especially if you buy the eight seater is this. The middle row is really really comfortable too again space is not an issue and because the floor is completely flat you don't have to make any adjustments yes the height overall is a bit higher because you're in the center but it's not really an issue headroom for me is just perfect and like i said the middle passenger is going to be really comfortable as well what you also have is a roof mounted seat belt for the center passenger and overall the comfort is really good now, if you are a tall guy who is over six feet, the third row is never really an option for you, but not on the high cross because again, the space is incredible. And the best part is access is very easy. All you need to do is slide the seat ahead, bit of a recline and just the amount of space you have just to get in is very, very easy. Especially if you're a tall guy, it's just one step in and that's it. Shut the door, pull the seat back, and even though it comes at a comfortable angle for the middle passenger as well, you still have a good amount of room. Now, my knees are not really grazing. That means it is very, very good. I'm not seated two knees up as well, so I'm not uncomfortable. And if you want a bit more comfort, there is this backrest that can further recline. You have seat belts at the back, your own AC vents. Is a charging socket on your left side. No charging ports, but that's all right. You have cup holders here. And yeah, it's a pretty comfortable place to be. It is really surprising the amount of room on offer. And at my height, I've never really been comfortable in any of the three-row SUVs. This one is very, very surprising and surpassing the Krista, which was the benchmark earlier. On the non-hybrid version, the tailgate is not powered. And once you open up, with all three rows up, you have a decent amount of room here. So, one big bag, vertically, one medium-sized bag, horizontally, and one cabin bag on top of that. If you don't have a cabin bag, you can obviously put soft bags in there. I think soft bags work very well in this kind of space. You can obviously fold down the rows and liberate a lot more room. So the third row goes down, and that opens up a cavernous boot. You also have a bit of space here, like a small tray to keep small items. And you know, overall it is a strong place, but if you are traveling with eight passengers, if the car is fully loaded, you will probably need a roof rack if you are going on a long journey. Otherwise, like I said, soft bags are the best that it can take. Now 
Now, as we know, powering this version of the High Cross is the 2 liter naturally aspirated petrol engine, 171 horsepower, but it has 205 Nm, which is slightly more than the hybrid. However, it is mated to a CVT, which is not the best. I mean, it is a typical CVT in that if you rush it, it doesn't like it. It has to be gradual, everything has to be moderate, and everything has to be relaxed. If you are part throttle, then the response is rather good. But push it a tad harder, and you're greeted with a lot of boomy sound and that rubber band effect of the CVT. That said, it builds speed smoothly and pulls cleanly till 6500 RPM, feeling sufficiently powerful for this 1.5 ton people mover. 0 to 100 kph in just 11 seconds, and it even hits a top speed of 175 kph. There is also an eco mode which dulls the responses in the interest of fuel efficiency. However, on full throttle, performance in eco and normal mode is identical. What you can do though is switch this CVT into M mode which is manual. Now it is a step CVT so it will let you control the steps to an extent and that just adds a bit more driver engagement but you know it's not the most natural feeling so it's best to just leave it in D. To further aid convenience, Toyota has opted for a narrow track in the interest of a tight turning radius which makes maneuvering and parking this large MPV rather easy. The fuel efficiency was a big talking point on the high cross. The hybrid obviously is absolutely aces. It is a proper strong hybrid. The diesel Crystra obviously was very good too. However, the non-hybrid, well, we put it through the full auto car test, which means we put it in eco mode, drove it around in pure eco, drove it around with the AC on and like you would a normal car. So plenty of traffic jams, a bit of acceleration whenever you could and the results well i mean you tell me in the city the innova high cross non-hybrid delivered 6.9 kpl now here's the problem this car is aimed at city buyers you know for someone who doesn't really like to drive has a chauffeur wants to be in the back seat enjoy that humongous back seat space and fine he won't care about the drive he won't care about the lazy cvt but when you tell him 6.9 kpl Alright, fine, if you absolutely inch it and nudge it everywhere, you can maybe get it to 7.2 max. And will you be okay with that number? I'm not really sure. Do let me know in the comments what do you think of that. A city efficiency of 6.9 kpl for a car that's meant to be driven in the city. Now this is proper Innova territory. We are out on the highways where Innovas of the past have absolutely dominated and ruled. And well, the High Cross, yes, it is quite stable even at triple digit speeds and you can just cruise along effortlessly. However, when you pull out to overtake, mash the accelerator, you're just greeted with this big whine of that CVT transmission and that is what is holding it back because the engine is nice and smooth. It's quite strong as well and part throttle responses are very good, which means if you are gentle and moderate, progress is quite quick. And here's the performance difference in eco and normal. What is very good though is the AC performance. For a cabin that is this large, it cools really fast. And even though it has manual controls, you know, no automatic climate control here, it still is very, very effective. Now what I thought would have been very good on this is the ride quality because it gets the smaller wheels, slightly higher profile compared to the hybrid version. And honestly, the difference is not too much. The ride is still a bit firm. Body control is good, roll is well contained and the high cross feels far tighter and more agile than the Krista. Now coming to the big part of efficiency. Well, city wasn't too impressive and the highway number is 12.4. Of course, we did the highway run in eco as well and that is what you are likely to do because when you're on the highway, you want to do everything you can to save fuel. So 12.4 kilometers per litre is what you're looking at with the high cross. Of course, it is way behind the hybrid and behind the diesel as well. So it'll be interesting to see how many owners actually venture out when they buy this. But what's it like with a full load? Alright, so this is going to be the situation in most high crosses. All three rows filled with people, some luggage in the back and an uphill drive. 
And the first thing you notice is, well, he'll start and I'm still in gear and the car's not rolling back. So he'll start is very much working. And once you get up to speed, you don't really feel that the car is struggling. Of course, on really steep ones, you will have to ring the engine a bit more. And that is when that CVT will absolutely whine. But in terms of power and in terms of just that torque and pulling power, there is plenty on offer. Performance isn't too different and even though the Hi-Cross is a front-wheel drive compared to the rear-wheel drive Krista, there is enough grip on offer. So who will buy the Hi-Cross non-hybrid? Honestly, it's not a big audience. Buyers who want nothing but a petrol Innova and are not willing to pay the huge premium for the hybrid version are the actual target. It has positives like its light steering, smooth petrol engine and its driving manners, which are much better than the Krista's. However, it will be a hard sell for Toyota given the low fuel efficiency, lack of features and above all, some very strong competitors that offer a lot more value.